Howdy! In this video, I'll explain to you how we make an MS diagnosis. There are five elements to consider, and I'm going to review all of them with you, starting right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic is making the MS diagnosis. Now, unfortunately, there's no magical blood test that we can draw and say, haha, we made an MS diagnosis. It's not that easy. We do, however, have an outstanding set of diagnostic criteria that have been constantly revised and updated to make them more efficient and faster. And in fact, the most recent rendition was in 2017. Now, if I translate those diagnostic criteria into patient-friendly language, there are five elements to the diagnostic criteria. And it's my goal to review those five with you today. And so let's jump into a patient-friendly vantage point of how we make an MS diagnosis. First off is the clinical history. It's really your story, what you tell me. And we call it the clinical history because that makes it sound kind of cooler. Really, I'm listening for elements that either suggest a clinical attack, a flare, an exacerbation, a relapse. It's all the same thing. It's when there's a discrete episode of loss of neurological function, which comes on typically in a subacute fashion, meaning it doesn't happen like a thunderclap. It builds up over hours to days. And then typically those symptoms will persist for several days, if not weeks or months. I'm listening for attacks like that. If I only hear about one attack, I'm thinking about clinically isolated syndrome, the first event that could go on to develop MS. If I'm hearing about multiple discrete attacks that aren't occurring at the same time and that are occurring in different parts of the body, I'm most certainly thinking about relapsing forms of MS. Now, people are not textbooks and people don't present with classic presentations and that's okay. The way I view it, you bring your story to the table and the onus is on me to interpret it and to see if it fits with multiple sclerosis. The second element is the neurological examination. And so after taking a thorough history, I will spend a good 15, sometimes 20 minutes running them through the ringer, looking at their cranial nerves, looking at their cerebellar coordination function, looking at their sensation, their ability to walk, their strength, their reflexes, and really what we're doing when we do a physical exam is we're looking for evidence on examination that buttresses what they told us in their story. So for example, if the person shares that years back they went blind in their left eye and it hurt when they moved their eye and we're thinking about optic neuritis, when I do my physical exam, I'm looking for evidence of old optic neuritis on their examination for this eye. So I'm looking for the, the, the examination to buttress what I learn in the history. Number three is the MRI. And in 2018, it's very hard to carry an MS diagnosis without proper neuroimaging. We have become very, very dependent upon the MRI because it's such a powerful biomarker. And so we obtain an MRI of the brain and of the cervical spine. And increasingly, we're obtaining MRIs of the thoracic spine as well. And on these MRIs, we're looking for classic lesions, spots, white spots in certain specific locations. If we see classic looking lesions in classic locations, this massively supports the diagnosis. And in fact, based on the newest diagnostic criteria, can actually cinch the diagnosis. MRIs are very, very important. And if in fact, we're not able to conclude an MS diagnosis, Almost invariably, we will be repeating MRIs every six months to one year as a surveillance to look for change over time. Now, number four isn't always necessary. It's a lumbar puncture. It's to examine spinal fluid and to look for evidence of an overly active inflammatory response in the central compartment. Now, when do I get a lumbar puncture and when do I not get a lumbar puncture? It really has to do with the first three elements. If I have a history, of a classic presentation, I have an examination that perfectly buttresses the history, and I have an MRI that is a slam dunk for MS, I don't think I need a lumbar puncture. It's when I don't have all those elements that an LP can be very, very helpful. So we probably do lumbar punctures, I would say less than 10% of the time these days, simply because our MRI technology is so robust. 
but it's still a very important element of the diagnostic criteria, and it can cinch a diagnosis when there's some uncertainty. Number five is, by the way, Aaron, prove it's nothing else. And that's actually a really large task. And so the onus is on us, as we prove this is MS, to prove it's not a bunch of other things. And this typically comes in three flavors. We like to rule out infections that we don't think the person has, because things like Lyme disease or even HIV or tuberculosis, these can mimic multiple sclerosis. And so on one occasion, we wanna check them and cross them off our list. I joke that way, if some smart aleck at a family reunion says, well, how do you know it's not syphilis? Then you can say, he checked, shut up. Now, there's two other categories that we look at, or at least I like to look at. Metabolic conditions that can mimic MS, things like B12 deficiency and thyroid abnormalities, and then also a third category, looking at connective tissue diseases, things like lupus and Sjogren's that can also mimic MS. And so in a quick nutshell, there's no easy way of making a MS diagnosis. There's no lab test or classic thing that says, ha ha, that's the answer. But we do have a set of diagnostic criteria that are most excellent. And when I think about translating those criteria into patient-friendly language, there's really five elements. The history, which is taken by listening to the human being. The examination, which is done by doing a neurological examination to look for evidence that buttresses the history. The all-important MRIs of the brain, cervical, and oftentimes thoracic spine. When appropriate, a lumbar puncture. And lastly, checking other things to prove it's not something mimicking MS. Once again, my name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for taking a few moments to learn about MS with me. Please leave comments, questions, and your own opinions down below. I read all the comments and I love to respond to them. We learn a lot from this growing online community by what you bring to the table and by what you share. So please take a moment and do so. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video and you think you'd enjoy other videos like this, take a moment and subscribe to the channel. My name's Aaron Boster and until my next video, take care. Mm -hmm.